today I would like to tell you all about these small molecules, uh, what we call metabolites, that bacteria can produce. And I think that many of you are already quite familiar with at least some of these metabolites. Think, for instance, of a nice summer day. You're walking outside. It can just be outside here on campus, but perhaps in a nice forest as well. And it hasn't rained in a while, so the ground is quite dry. But then we do get this much-needed summer rain. And what happens then is that you really can get this smell, this foresty, earthy smell. You could even perhaps call it the smell of rain. And this smell I personally really like because it reminds me of summer, it reminds me of this area I grew up in, but it's not just some random smell. It is one of these metabolites that I just mentioned. Its name is geosmin, and it's produced by actinobacteria that live in the soils all around us. And this is just an example of one class of bacteria that produce one specific metabolite. But if you look at these forest environments, there's way more going on. And to investigate this, we have to dive into the lab. So when we do that and we look into these soils, we can identify the bacteria living there. For instance, these actinobacteria that I already mentioned. But we just learned from our previous talks too that these microbes are not just living there alone. There's many other living there. And in turn, each of these microbes can produce many different of these metabolites. And these metabolites don't just influence themselves, but they also can influence their host. Think, for instance, as a growth agent to a plant, or if two bacteria compete with each other, they can produce antibiotics. And this also brings a bit of a problem. If you think of all these microbes, thousands of them, all these different metabolites, where do we even start studying these? How do we prioritize what bacteria to pick if we, for instance, are looking for a new antibiotic? And in my work, I create computer programs and software that can help with this. To really understand how these methods work, we first need to understand how these bacteria can actually produce these metabolites. So going back into the lab, if we start growing these bacteria, we could start looking at the metabolites that they produce. But to fully get the complete picture, we have to look at their DNA. And not just the DNA, specifically, we have to look at their genes. So we normally show a gene as being an arrow. Uh, and one of these genes can produce roughly one building block of these metabolites that we're so interested in. And very conveniently for us in bacteria, very often we see that the genes that work together to produce the building blocks of one metabolite are clustered together in what we call a gene cluster. And this is something that I can use my computer models for to detect. And with that, with this detection, we can actually say, OK, maybe this one bacteria has the capabilities to produce an antibiotic just from looking at the DNA. But then we're not fully there yet. If we think back of this first example that I gave about geosmin, there was another factor. For geosmin to be released into the air, there was the rain. And then we could smell this metabolite. So there, you must imagine that in a forest, there are so many different changing conditions that we cannot really mimic in our lab environments. So we need to look at what actually activates these gene clusters in producing these metabolites that we want to have, or we may miss a lot in our research. So because of this, the whole data analysis can be quite overwhelming. You have all these bacteria, all these metabolites, all these gene clusters, and now even there is also these triggers that we need to find. So to make that more simple, in my work, I create these computer work, uh, programs. And then specifically in my work, I work on the trigger that can actually activate these gene clusters into, produ into production. Um, and with this, we can go from just analyzing a couple of these genes and gene clusters and metabolites 
to actually starting to fill in the blanks and explore hundreds of them at the same time. And because we work on computer programs, it's not just me working on my hypotheses, so just me looking at, for instance, a new antibiotic, but we can share this all around the world and have hundreds of people working at the same time with these computer programs to investigate their own hypotheses. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.